I think we all understand how confusing this must have been. A young woman brought up in a sheltered community, unable to understand what is going on, thrown into unusual circumstances. So upset, she can't even remember the face of her attack. Objection. Counsel is trying to force his conclusions onto the jury. Mr. Warren. I'll reframe the question here. This is not the same thing. What he's saying is wrong. What I'm saying is wrong? Yes. You didn't accuse this man, Craig Johnson, of attacking you? Yes, but... You... Was... So you remember the incident? You remember having such a violent reaction that a crowd rushed forward to see what had happened to you? Yes, but... Um... You remember pointing a figure, a finger at Craig Johnson and indicating he'd attacked you? I told you I was scared. Yes, scared and confused. Yes. So you made a mistake? Yes, yes, I made a mistake. Yes, just as you made a mistake about who attacked you the night of August 25th. Yeah, no, no. Well, which is it? You sit down, guys. I, I made a mistake before. Yes, but not the night jo Jesse Blue attacked you. No. Yeah, I, I don't... Well, it is possible Jesse Blue attacked you. No, it is not possible. But you just said you made no mistake about that. No, I, I didn't say that. You said you made no mistake about who attacked you the night of August 25th. I didn't. No, maybe I did, but I'm, I'm confused. You're mixing things Objection, up. Objection, Your Honor. He is harassing the witness. She cannot keep up with this line of questioning. Obviously. Mr. Warren. No further questions, Your Honor. You know, I had time to think it over, a lot of time, and we can still make this work, Alan. I disagree, now, Annie. Now, just hear me out for a second. There's a reason why Cassie lost Tammy to the system. And now the system is simply not going to give her back. Not That's all. It's not that simple. Yes, it is. The courts are going to see that we can provide the better and more stable home environment. Now, there are complicated issues and emotions here. We're talking about a little girl's life. And what has Cassie done for this little girl up to now? A dangerous environment with a drug dealer father, a lonely existence, shuffling her from foster home to foster home. And what has Cassie done? Sitting home, baking cookies? No, she strips in front of a bunch of drunken businessmen. Cassie is Tammy's natural mother. But she's becoming even more unnatural as time goes on. The court is going to see that we can give this little girl a beautiful life. We can show her the world, expose her to different cultures. We can give her so much more than Cassie will ever be able to give her. The best clothes, the best schools. And Alan, most importantly, we can love this little girl. More than she has ever been loved before. It'll bring meaning and focus to our lives. A reason for wealth and position, huh? I need... I need Tammy. We need Tammy. And Tammy needs us, Ellen. She needs us. What about Cassie? Cassie, she can visit Tammy when Tammy's a little older. Visit? Yes, you can do this. You can do this for me. You owe me, Alan. You owe me this. Now, excuse me. Excuse you for what? For letting Tammy get away from you? Annie. No, please. come on, Alan. If you would have let me stay with Tammy like I wanted to, Tammy would have never run away, and Cassie would have been forced to go through with our plan. I hate to interrupt. Then but... don't, Nettie. You have the power. You have the power to do this. You have the power, Alan, and the influence to make Tammy our daughter. It's not going to happen. Ms. Bloom, it has been established that there was an incident in Lancaster, Pennsylvania involving a Mr. Craig Johnson, is that correct? Yes. How long ago did this occur? At least ten years ago, which is why I didn't recognize the photograph. The photograph of Craig Johnson, you mean? Yes. Uh, it was a long time ago. I forgot what he looked like. Yes, it was long ago. Ten years ago, and you would have been, what, 16? Yes. 16 years old. Was that the first time that you'd ever been out of that sheltered community? It was the very first time. And how many words could you speak? Well, I, I didn't speak at that time. And isn't it true that you didn't even know this universal sign language back then? No, there was no one in Goshen to teach me. I... So the only way that you communicated was with this self-invented home sign language that you only used with your mother and father? Yes, that's exactly right. All right, ten years ago, when the police came to your home concerning the Mr. Johnson incident, what happened? Um, well, my father explained to me that he was simply trying to take a picture of me. Uh, 
So I apologize to him and his family. You apologize to Mr. Johnson and his family? Yes, I did. Ladies and gentlemen, everything that Miss Bloom has said is in this police report, including her extensive apology, which Mr. Warren failed to mention. Uh, Your Honor, Mr. Marler can make any reasonable inference or deduction Mr. from the Warren, evidence he likes. please, can we continue? Yes. All right, Miss Bloom, do you have a job? Yes, I do. I work at Cedars Hospital. Mm -hmm. And where do you live? Here in Springfield. Do you have any friends? Yes, I do. Some very good ones. So it has been a long, long time since you lived in that uh, religious community of Goshen? A very long time. I haven't. Yes. All right, at your job, do you have daily and consistent contact with both women and men? Yes, I do. And... I would never mistake the intentions of a man who tried to take a picture of me now. You wouldn't? No. And I did not mistake the intentions of the man who attacked me on August 25th. I did not imagine his hands on my body. And I did not imagine him tearing my clothes. And I certainly did not make up my bloody bruises or my coma or my nightmares. Miss Bloom. Do you have any doubt whatsoever as to the identity of the man who attacked you? No, I do not. It was that man right there, Roy Meacham. Thank you, Miss Bloom. Your Honor, I have no further questions at this time. Your Honor, I'd like to redirect, if I may. Fine, Mr. Warren, but first I'd like to call for a ten-minute recess. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you are reminded not to discuss the case among yourselves or to permit any person or persons to discuss the case with you. All rise. Was Ross brilliant or was Ross brilliant? As always, especially considering how that guy Warren tried to mess Abby up like that. Oh, well, maybe Ben shook her up a bit, but Ross did a really good job of getting her back on track, so. Mom? I hate what that man is trying to do, make her out to be some weak-willed, confused girl when nothing could be farther from the truth. I'm afraid I got some bad news. He's not through yet. I do not want to get back up there, not with that man. Abby, look. You're doing fine, all right? Ross is going to help you through this, okay? I know that, but why does he want me to get back up there? What could he possibly have to ask me now? Only moments ago, the alleged victim admitted that she had falsely accused another man of attacking her, a native of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, who was trying to explain how a camera worked. Miss Bloom misunderstood him, and excuse she me, went... Sorry. Excuse uh, Wait a minute, here comes the prosecutor now. Mr. Marler, can you please ex uh, tell us about this latest revelation? What revelation is that? That Abigail Bloom had falsely accused another man of attacking her. This must be a big surprise, not no, to mention no. a major blow to your case. No, not at all. The victim identified in a police lineup Roy Meacham as the man who attacked her. And the defense attorney, all his tricks and tactics, that's not going to make any difference because Roy Meacham is guilty. Well, what about reasonable doubt? <clears throat> well, I am proving there is no reasonable doubt if you would follow the trial, all right? Excuse me, we're getting just a little close. Thank you very Daddy, much. Daddy, just turn it off. I can't believe that you don't see through Ben Wood. I can't believe you're doing this, period. 